Hi there, this is the fourth video in a series about PFSense. This video moves on from the install and basic configuration of the last one, and now it's time to customise, update and back up. So let's get started. OK, so let's get straight to it and start customising PFSense's dashboard. And the very first thing I'm going to do, because I don't want to keep having to edit out my WAN address, is I'm going to click onto the spanner here, and under interfaces I'm going to tell it not to show the WAN anymore. So we've just got LAN here, but normally I'd have the interfaces showing all of the interfaces that I have on the system. OK, so next now I'm going to go onto System and then go to General Setup and scroll down here. And I want to change the number of columns to three because I'm using a widescreen monitor. And also I want to check here the available widgets to be at the top of the screen. And now let's click save. So the first thing here, the system information widget, I don't think there's really any point in having this show up every time we start up PFSense and go to the web UI. It shows things such as our CPU type, well I know what that is. Although it does have useful information such as the CPU temperature, and also it tells us whether there's an update available, which there is, so we can update that in the moment. But for my purposes now, I don't really want the system information. It just takes up too much room on the dashboard, so I'm going to delete that. So now I'm going to speed through adding various widgets that I want on my dashboard. So not to bore you, let's fast forward through this bit. OK, so I've moved everything around how I want it, so I'm going to click on the Save button here. And just to quickly go through it, I've got my interfaces, which you saw earlier. Um, because this is a physical PFSense box, I want the Smart Status. And also, again, it's a physical PFSense box, so I want the Core Temperatures. Here, this is a useful widget, the Services Status. Here, we can restart various services and stop them. Underneath that, I've put Traffic Graphs. And on the right hand side here, I've put dynamic DNS status. There's no dynamic DNS set up at the moment, but there will be when I come to install the OpenVPN. Again, that's why I've put the OpenVPN widget here. And also I want the wake on LAN widget so I can wake up my devices from the web UI should I want to. So as you can see, it's really easy to customize PFSense dashboard with these available widgets. So just choose what you want and customize that dashboard. Okay, so with the dashboard customized, now I'm going to update PFSense. So I'm going to click onto System and then go to Update. And here I can see my current system here is 2.4.3, but there's a 2.4.3 underscore one available. So I'm just going to click onto Confirm and PFSense will update. OK, so the system's updated successfully and now it's rebooting. OK, so the system's rebooted, so let's sign in. Now looking at my dashboard, I think there's probably a good idea to actually have the update status on the dashboard somewhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add back the system information, but I'm going to click onto the spanner to edit it. And I'm going to untick everything except the version and click save. So now I've just got the version under system information and it doesn't take up the whole dashboard. OK, so that brings us on nicely to the next thing. So click on to Diagnostics and then we can click on to Backup and Restore. Now it's a good idea to take a backup of your configuration. Just in case anything goes wrong with your PFSense, you can always restore it back to where it was. Now under the Backup Configuration, I normally uncheck to skip the RDD data and just have it back up absolutely everything. So once you're ready, just click on to Download Configuration as XML. And there we have a configuration file for our PFSense box. And restoring is as simple as just picking the file that we want to restore and clicking Restore Configuration. And also PFSense has a very useful feature that we can click onto Config History and we can actually restore various different configurations from this list here. But it's always good to have an actual PFSense Backup XML file just in case you need to restore and you can't access the PFSense web UI. OK, so we customised the dashboard, updated PFSense and taken a backup in case we go wrong and need to restore. 
So let's end this video here and move on to the next video in which we're going to look at DHCP and how to configure it, setting up multiple DHCP pools, how to set up static mappings, adding a new interface and adding an access point for Wi-Fi and we're going to touch on how to repurpose an old ISP router into a Wi-Fi access point to use with PFSense. Well, if you can't wait for that next video, well, you actually don't have to because it's being uploaded with this one. I cut the video in half because I thought it was too many topics for one video, so I split it because I had no idea what I could actually title a video otherwise. Well, it's time for me to sign off and I hope you enjoyed this video enough to hit the like button and I hope you like the channel enough to subscribe. I'd just like to give a big thanks to all of my supporters. I really appreciate it and you make all of this possible. Well, whatever you're up to for the rest of the day, I hope it's good and I'll catch you next time.